I just finished a thorough analysis on the Curator Analyst workflow. I call this the new Curator UI. The version that I just reviewed was 2.5.26 and several things I really liked about this. One is that uh, these guys really improved the performance significantly. Uh, but this really changes the way we use Curator. I've been using this tool for a while. And you know that the standard way is you know these are the old dashboards, and you go into your offenses to check on the the events and flows and the rules that fire on the offense, and then you have the log activity tab, which you know nowadays is really a great deal of information going in here to see this kind of a real time. Um, same thing on the network activity. Uh, that all that changes. Let me actually show you what I found out. When you go into the new UI, well, first of all, there's a small penalty of two or three seconds that you pay the first time you load the app. After that, these guys are really doing a lot of caching to improve the situation. So this is the equivalent of the dashboard view that we have. Obviously, the new dashboards in Curator are pulls and are much nicer than the traditional ones. But if you go here, there are also other areas. Uh, one is the search and no longer you have to have a search for logs and a search for flows, but you can actually select those in here. And I'm going to talk definitely far more about this uh, next or during this video. And then you also have the offenses tab, which again, first time you load, takes a few seconds uh, to put the data there. But it's not that bad. It actually has improved a lot. And then after you've done that, as I said before, you can actually go back and forth to the different areas. And because of the usage of caching, then it's in instantaneous, almost instantaneously. Let me tell you what I like this. Let me take a look at one, one offense. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, it's an offense with uh, 10 events. Here are the three rules that contributed to that offense. Uh, this is the timeline where I launched the, the I replayed the logs for, for this attack. Here have, we have the Watson information here. Uh, definitely nicer looking. But once you click in here, well, obviously you, you get indication about the maliciousness of a particular entity in. Um, let me click on the events that trigger this. And when you click here on the events, basically you are in the, the, the same search menu that I showed you before, but with a search specifically for the 10 events that contributed to this offense. And here they are. Uh, if you ever get in the external IPs, you, know, you get these circles that may probably mean that you don't have the API keys which you can get for free in the uh, X-Force Exchange and when you click in here it will actually prompt you to insert those. So again this is this search. Only thing I don't like is that the developers chose to lead with the advanced or AQL version of the search and I prefer the visual builder which is actually very nice. The loading instead of being on the right and difficult to see is very apparent in here and we can actually see that better but when you click here it's an important caveat when you click on visual video you get this strange whoops there's a problem and i don't like this view because it what all this really telling is that you can go from aql from visual builder to aql so you build your gui the nice way the searches and then you go in into convert it into AQL, but not the other way around. That's all that, that thing is indicating. And this is a far improvement versus the traditional way. If, if we go back for a second on the traditional way, the way you build a search was actually, you know, going here and clicking on these uh, columns and searching for the properties. And that was nothing bad, but definitely there's a, there are better ways of actually uh, doing that. You could also right click on the events which you can still do but you need to post them here. Uh, so all that has changed uh, significantly. Let me show you 
what I mean. Since I'm already in the search, I can even forget that I'm looking at this particular offense if I want to, and or go through the menu and go to search, and start adding the conditions that I want to do searches on. And you do that by clicking on this, and here you have all the custom properties. The one that I have used recently, oops, uh, and all of the ones that are available. They are, you know, all the custom properties that I have loaded in my curator system, quite a few of them. One important thing is that this icon here indicates that the property is indexed, so it's going to be performing very well, very fast on the search side. And the way you select this is, for example, let's say that I'm looking on username. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to put uh, user and it's much nicer. It shows me all the things that are available that has the word user in it. It's username, what I'm interested in. And one important thing is here are the conditions that we see equal, those are equal contains and they're not contained. We're going to use the contain one in a second, but I just want to bring something to your attention because this is not clearly indicated in here. You can scroll down here and the familiar is not an A or it's an A and match expression and so that you can do more more searches in here are available. But you need to know that you can scroll down. So if we put in here contains and I'm going to put uh, R Shire. I don't know how to spell it uh, later, but it, it will find it because it's a contain. This is equivalent to I like in SQL, in the AQL version of it. And I hit enter, it's going to be there. If I also want to search for a username, Kathy, also, in case that is there, I put Kathy here, hit enter, and notice that it automatically puts it as an OR, right? So uh, if I just want to run that search, I just click here, search, and it's going to perform a search on that user, not just on the offense that I was. I'm actually in the search environment and I have, uh, in fact, uh, just to show you that, let me actually go into the SQL part of the advanced builder. We can actually see, you know, you see the I like there <laughs> and that limited 1000 has to do with the with the fact that in the visual builder we have that limit here that you can actually change there but it's going to give you just the first 1000 elements of the search let's say i want to also search by ip and i'm actually going to go right here and take that ip and i'm going to copy the text notice that i also have the filter that you are familiar from the traditional way and i can go here and add another condition and this is going to be the destination IP and I have all the options in here, here it is, destination IP is also index and I'm going to type, uh, I'm going to uh, paste that IP address now and I can run that search and it's going to find just uh, that one. Notice that the condition is by default and but I can actually change that to or if I want to, right? Let's let's uh, leave it on the default on and I want to find any anything with uh, the user R SHA in with that IP address and there should be at least one event because we actually uh, s s see it uh, down here. So clicking on the run search, it loads very quickly and shows two events for that. It's actually very good. Another thing, let's say that I have uh, several uh, IPs that I found on a threat intelligence source that are malicious and they are CSV separated which is actually very common. Notice that it's even tell you here do shift enter to add CSV and I can even show you that manually. If I were to add 1.1.1.1 .1 .1 .1 and 9.9.9.9 this is an example. Instead of hitting enter I need to see shift enter and it will put those on or. It's kind of a, it's a neat time-saving feature right there. If I also want to add another condition set, let's say that I want to make this one OR and this is going to be, for example, let me put event name. Event name contains, uh, let's put a DNS, I don't even know whether I'm going to get one here or not. And notice that this is now this other set of condition is by default an OR. I can run such a search and if there are additional elements 
will be shown in here and in fact there is actually one notice that is even in the event name it says DNS null record it's actually very nice and of course I, I will put it just as part of this condition but if you want to switch that to and you can easily do that and the important thing is that when if you are doing this building your your search and you want to use it programmatically with AQL well here it is right I think this is a lot easier. Notice the, the, the nesting uh, parentheses in here. That's going to be much harder to do it manually. So the tool actually does it for you. Some improvements there. One thing that is very powerful here is these columns, right? Now, and I'm going to switch, get back to what I was doing, which is show, uh, switch between events and flows. But here, the way that the columns work, I mean, you have some templates in here that you can use if you want to. But I think that they are very powerful even without the templates. Here are the columns that I have selected in my search. You do that by clicking on the one and it reminds you which of them are indexed or not. But in here, let's say that I want to show the, the event name as the first column so all you need to do is drag it in here I need to grab it well like so and then if I apply this I need to rerun that search in order to have well I'm gonna have uh, yeah these are the the, the the yeah the previous one our shire this and the event name DNS and we see that event name now moves to the beginning of the column. There are many more things that I want to, that I found out that you may want to know. So first of all, this icon, this icon is the sorting, right? I mean, actually you, you, you go to it by clicking here and, and you can do the sorting. Now, the sorting as usual, the default is descending. If you want to do it the other way around, you need to select this option. And that's why this one is not here because it's, that's the default top to bottom in other words right and you can also do grouping okay I don't have any one group in here but if I want to group by I only have one event here but uh, if I were to group by event name which doesn't make sense in this particular search but just to prove the point you get here that icon right and uh, you get you know those totals in there as a consequence of doing that if you have multiple grouping obviously it's going to group first by the one that is on top and then within you know commonalities on the subsequent so if i were to select here low level category as well then it, you're going to see the elements being uh, grouped first by this one and then within that group uh, being shown here and remember after you make changes to your column you need to rerun the search to see those changes being reflected we actually get rid of all these uh, conditions and let's uh, search on for example destination IP again it's in here on the recent one so I don't even have to look for it and I'm gonna paste this one in there hit enter is right there. If you want another one, an or you you started as you saw me doing before, and I can I'm running a search on events here. Let's actually run that search and see if we find anything on the last 48 hours. Nothing there, right? Let's say that I want to switch to flows. All you need to do is do this, and then click here, run search, and see if there are some something on the flows. And there's nothing there. If that would have been, I would have seen it here. Oh, actually that, that was a mistake I need to get rid of this because that's what I had in the cache notice the usage of the cache is actually in this case even beat me here let me uh, search here for destination IP or put source on destination IP just uh, to put equal and that value that I had and run the search I'm now on the flows right and hit enter I think yeah so I, I find my entries in here again if you want to switch from there to flows and obviously the 
custom property that you are selecting needs to make sense in the case of uh, when you switch from one to another. I guess that if it doesn't sense make sense, the tool will automatically delete them. But you need to know what what actually the, you are doing. So let me actually run a search and switch to events and see what I get. And I got no results on the on the log. So this is only on the flows. This video is already longer than I like to make videos about, but I think it is worth it. I think that this new UI, uh, I'm going to start fighting my muscle memory of using the old one and get into the new one because this uh, it, it can be far more efficient. It's actually, for people that are new to Curator, this is more welcoming than the traditional one. So, And I think that the, the guys with the performance improvement they've done, uh, they are moving the tool in, in the right direction.